Goal attainment scaling is a method for measuring individual and program goal achievement. It involves the use of interviews during goal setting and reevaluation to determine progress. Unlike typical goal setting, in which an individual sets a goal that is either met or unmet, goal attainment scaling allows the individual to envision a full range of possible outcomes, from much less than expected to much more than expected. The goal attainment scale provides a structured framework for identifying the specific goal behaviors using a five-point scale of plus two to minus two. The first step is identifying the goals. Typically, individuals will select between two and five goals. Goal sheets can be modified to add additional columns for each goal. After a thorough evaluation of the client, the therapist and client can meet together to discuss goals. In a client-centered approach to treatment, it is ideal for the client to participate in scaling their selected goals. In some situations, the client and therapist will discuss general goal areas that the client would like to pursue, and the therapist will complete the scaling process. In cases in which the client has significant cognitive limitations, or when working with young children, the therapist may select the goals, consulting with family or caregivers when possible. When using the goal attainment scale for research purposes, a supervisor or colleague should be involved in scaling the goals to avoid the potential for rater bias. If you remember, Ashley has issues with upper extremity range of motion and strength. And when I asked her what she wanted to work on this semester, she said she'd really like to get her hair pulled back in a ponytail by herself. So right now she's dependent on her mom and her mom brushes it and secures it. And um, I think that'd be a really good place to start. Good, I really like that you collaborated with Ashley on, on her goal. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's gonna help you build a good therapeutic relationship uh, with her to start where, where she wants to start. Mm -hmm. And she's a teenager, so doing her own hair is important to her, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, her baseline. That's her minus two. And it sounds like it's dependent on mother for brushing and pulling hair back into a ponytail. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's our minus two, much less than expected outcome, and you can write that in on the template. Okay. Uh, what do you think is realistic for Ashley? What do you think you can help her accomplish in the next eight weeks? To determine what is realistic for the client, the therapist should consider relevant client factors, performance skills and patterns, and how the individual's context and environment can affect goal attainment. If we work on other strengthening and range of motion activities and also hair grooming, I think that we could be able to get her to pull her hair back in a low ponytail um, with moderate assistance. And I think that moderate assistance for Ashley would be that she can brush her hair, and that would be from top to bottom, mm -hmm. and, um, and then her mom could help her do the rest, like secure the rubber band. I think that's a workable goal. Go ahead and write that in the zero, the expected outcome okay. category. During scaling, be sure to clarify the goal conditions. For example, what does minimal versus moderate versus maximum assist mean? These terms can vary from therapist to therapist. What do you think is a better than expected outcome for Ashley? This is our plus one. So this means that it's not likely that you'll reach this, but it's possible. I think that she should be able to pull her hair in a low ponytail independently by eight weeks. Yeah, that would be quite an improvement in her upper extremity strength and range of motion. So I think that's a good yeah. plus one. Go ahead and write that in. Now, think about the ultimate level of goal attainment for Ashley. Mm -hmm. This is um, much better than expected. We're mm -hmm. talking about the plus two category. It's highly unlikely, but it could happen. Well, I think that she could brush her hair and bring it to a high ponytail at the top of her head independently by six weeks. And that would be a little short of the eight weeks of the end of the semester. Yeah, uh, I agree this is really highly unlikely, but it could happen. This would mean that she's fully independent in her hair care um, well ahead of the target date. So that's a plus two. Uh, go ahead and write that on the template. Whoops, the student is changing two variables when moving from the plus one to the plus two level. 
let's make sure we only change one variable at a time. In this case, the student therapist chose to keep the target date at eight weeks. Now let's go back to the other end of the goal scale and talk about minus one. This means less than expected outcome. Where do you think Ashley would be in a less than expected outcome in eight weeks? Well, I have a zero as moderate assistance for a low ponytail. And right now her baseline is dependent. So I think a minus one would be that she can't brush her hair from top to bottom, but she can pull it back in a low ponytail. Um, and then her mom does the rest for her. Okay, I think that still represents an increase in her upper extremity strength and range of motion, but it's not as far along as we'd like to see her by the end of eight weeks. So that's a good minus one. Go ahead and write that in. In the next example, the supervisor assists the fieldwork student in scaling a goal for an adult client seen for cognitive impairment. I reviewed your evaluation report and it looks really good. It sounds like both you and Kevin are in agreement about addressing his issue with sustained attention. Yeah, so he really wants to make some of the projects in group session and I think that'd be a really good place to work on this goal. Okay, so what's his baseline? What's his minus two? Where's he at right now? Right now he's not able to attend at all, so he wanders at the beginning of session and he leaves right away even though he says he likes the group and he's in and out during the, during the time. Okay, um, let's go ahead and write that in. When determining baseline performance, it's important to take the time to thoroughly understand the client's current level of performance then focus on one specific single behavior that you can measure. What do you think is a realistic outcome for Kevin? What do you think you can help him do in the next eight weeks? I think he could sustain attention during OT group for 20 minutes with, with moderate verbal cues. Okay, what do you mean by moderate verbal cues? I would say that moderate verbal cues would be five to 10 verbal cues with encouragement like good job, keep going, things like that. Okay, that's our zero, our expected level. Go ahead and write that in. Be sure to clarify any ambiguous language so that the rater or raters can easily reevaluate level of goal attainment at a later date. Okay, now that we have the zero established, what do you think would be a better than expected outcome for Kevin? This is going to be our plus one. I would say that Kevin would be able to sustain attention in group session for 20 minutes with only one to four verbal cues to remain on task and that would be by the end of eight weeks. Okay, that sounds good. We'll go ahead okay. and write that in. Now, what do you think would be Kevin's much more than expected outcome? This is the plus two. This is way better than, than anticipated. It's possible, but highly unlikely. Okay. I think that Kevin will be able to sustain attention in group session for 20 minutes with no verbal cues by the end of eight weeks. Okay. That's, that's going to be pretty difficult to do, but I think that's, that's what plus two is all about. So go ahead and write that in. Okay. Now the only thing left is the minus one, the less than expected outcome. What do you think Kevin's less than expected outcome would be? Um, I would say that he would be able to sustain attention for 10 minutes with max verbal cues by the end of eight weeks. Okay, so when we're talking about maximum verbal cues, what do you mean here? Is that continual? Yeah, so it would be an improvement for him to stay 10 minutes since he's not staying at all right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he needs a lot of encouragement and redirection and I don't think that's where he could be by the end of eight weeks. Yeah, I agree. So since we've already defined moderate assist mm -hmm. as five to 10 verbal cues, this continual or maximum verbal cueing would be 11 or more cues during his time in group, right? Yeah. Okay. So that sounds like a, a good minus one level. If you okay. want to go ahead and write that on the template. Here's another example of missing values. How would you score the level of attainment if the client was able to sustain attention for, say, 15 or 18 minutes? It's best to use a range of values to capture all possible outcomes. For example, minus 1 could be 10 to 14 minutes. 0 could be 15 to 20 minutes. Plus 1, 
could be 21 to 26 minutes. And the plus two level could be 27 or more minutes. The order in which you complete the goal scales can vary. In the examples just shown, the therapist and student start with the client's baseline level of performance, then determine the expected or most realistic outcome. This creates a foundation from which to then consider better or worse outcomes. Here are some guidelines to remember when scaling goals. Goals should be measurable and objective. There should be no ambiguous language that would make it difficult to determine where the goal behavior falls on the scale. Ensure that you are selecting outcome behaviors that match the goal scales. For example, plus two should be very difficult to attain. If you find that you are attaining all goals at the plus two level, this would indicate that the goals are too easy to attain. It is best to have a supervisor review your goals with you to help you determine what is realistic for your particular learning environment. Once you have scaled your clinical goals, you can reevaluate progress at any time. In clinical practice, the therapist must be flexible in adjusting treatment to the changing needs of the client. However, if you are using goal attainment scaling for research purposes, in which you are also measuring the ability to predict outcomes, it's important to avoid any changes to the scale before the scheduled reevaluation.